Hi everyone, um, so this is the final session within the qualitative data analysis training series um, with myself, Dr Gillian Waller from Teesside University, England. So this is um, the third session and it's going to continue the learning and understanding from the previous session around, I'm just going to move that, around thematic analysis um, by talking about some of the advantages of adopting a thematic analysis approach um, but also thinking about some of the challenges um, and how we can overcome them. Um, so again just to start off with the learning objectives for this session um, by the end of this session this third session you should be able to have a better analysis of have a better understanding of the advantages or strengths of using thematic data analysis um, and you should also be able to reflect upon some of the challenges or the difficulties that can be associated with thematic analysis um, and how you could reduce these or overcome them in practice. So starting with the positives first, which I always think is a good plan, um, what are some of the advantages um, and the strengths of adopting a thematic analysis approach? Um, so first off, and like many of the other um, qualitative analysis methods that I mentioned in the first session, um, thematic analysis is a really flexible and adaptable analysis method, um, even though as a process it has these um, recognised distinct steps, um, it's likely that some of these stages will overlap, so you might find yourself starting the coding um, on an early um, bit of data and then organising those into themes. But then you might go back to the coding process um, on later pieces of data as you can get different insights um, from the later stages of data collection. And these might result in the revision of the themes um, that you'd initially proposed. So it really is um, a flexible and iterative method um, that doesn't always require you to follow those stages in a linear fashion. Um, thematic analysis is also largely quite a user-friendly data analysis method. Um, the steps that I talked you through in the previous session um, are all relatively straightforward and it does help that you don't need to, that they don't need to be followed to a T. Um, because of its flexible nature. So therefore, even a researcher with um, no previous experience of qualitative data analysis or um, only very little can generally pick it up and work through um, the steps themselves quite easily without doing a large amount of training or prior reading. However, um, if it is your first time undertaking a thematic analysis and you do have like any issues or concerns, um, it's always a good idea to um, talk about your coding and your theme organising with um, another member of your research team, as that can help you feel more confident about the process. Um, and also it works to increase the validity of the data analysis. If you've got this um, second person to double code, or to share your ideas or findings with. Um, so it gen generally is um, of good practice to have at least um, two people responsible for undertaking a thematic analysis, um, or as a minimum, having like a second person to be involved with um, the double coding. And this like generally is a minimum requirement when writing up um, qualitative analysis for publication in um, a peer review journal. Move that over here. Um, so continuing with the advantages, um, thematic analysis is um, analysis method that's really great for exploring participants' knowledge and understanding um, and exploring their views and perspectives. So that's why it does make the obvious choice. It is the obvious choice for the um, qualitative data analysis being conducted within the Watsonometer project. Um, as when we're looking to explore the participants and the stakeholders' views 
around their experience and their access to metering technology in their local area, um, this can be done like really well with thematic analysis. Um, and finally, um, an advantage is that um, thematic analysis can be applied in either um, an inductive way, so that's when you're thinking about um, specific instances to generate a more um, generalised conclusion or a deductive way, which um, is where you're thinking about generalised principles um, that are known to be true for a um, specific conclusion. So a deductive method is particularly useful um, in a service evaluation, such as when we're thinking about um, evaluating metering, as you're sort of specifically exploring the service user's views around um, a preset topic area, um, and you're evaluating the specific areas or, or needs of the service or access with those individuals who are actually using it or, or, or well, not using it, if the if the case may be. Um, so thinking about um, some of the main limitations of thematic analysis now. Um, so generally, thematic analysis do not encompass a philosophical um, philosophical standpoint. Um, therefore, researchers or sort of users of the analysis need to apply a standpoint. Otherwise, the work um, can lack a degree of um, conceptual thinking or, um, just in simpler terms, the analysis can become very descriptive as it only focuses on what, what is said. Um, so what he said or she said, um, instead of providing a more interpretive account and considering the nuanced data. And this... Necess this isn't necessarily a limitation, um, just depending on the um, scope and aim of your research. So like for the What's in a Meter project, we are wanting to focus more on what is said over um, what is implied. So this doesn't necessarily limit us. Um, but a caveat to this is the fact that um, we are, like I mentioned sort of in the previous slide, we are adopting the use of um, an implementation theory, um, so the normalisation process theory, and that's going to um, allow us to have a theoretical perspective and will be really useful in helping us to um, structure and arrange the analysis. Um, another thing to consider is, again, just move this up here. Um, another thing to consider is that although one of the advantages of thematic analysis as a method is that it's flexible, um, the fact that it is such a flexible method um, can mean it's sometimes difficult to decide what aspects of the data to focus on and it can be sort of challenging to identify um, key areas or which aspects of the content themes are the most useful. So I think a way to minimise this, um, it's really important, and going back to what we said in the first session, is just to be really clear about what the aims of your research are. So although this can be problematic and that um, you may overlook other things, it does ensure that the analysis that you conduct in is as wide reaching um, enough to answer your original research questions. Um, and finally, thematic analysis um, can also be guilty of assuming um, a collective meaning. Um, and as a, a key feature of, of it is that it focuses on identifying themes across the data. Um, therefore, it can lead to the overlooking of um, individual accounts if they are very different to each other. Um, and this is also linked to the fact that it can overlook um, the language used by participants. Um, as this can be really important when thinking about um, how participants define the area in question or what it means to them, as this can be apparent by the kind of language used. And although this won't be a big concern within the um, qualitative analysis in the Watson Meter project, it may mean that the um, thematic analysis is not a suitable analysis method to be used within another research project 
um, and therefore it may be more useful to use another qualitative analysis method that can take these into consideration. Um, so something like narrative analysis would be really useful in that context. Um, but this all goes back to really making sure that the analysis method that you choose is the most suitable to explore the aims of your research. Um, so just finishing off by um, revisiting the learning objectives for this session. Um, so we've talked about the advantages or the strengths of using thematic data ana analysis um, and what and the insights that it can bring. And we've also talked about some of the, the more challenging aspects or the um, difficulties that can be associated with thematic analysis um, and how we could think about reducing these or overcoming them in practice. Um, and finally, just again, some further reading for you. These are just um, the same, actually the same textbooks that I mentioned in the previous sessions, um, as I just think they all offer like a really good overview of qualitative methods and qualitative data analysis, obviously in a lot more detail than in these sessions have covered. Um, so thank you very much for um, watching these training sessions around qualitative data analysis. I um, hope they've been helpful and given you a good um, starting point into the world of qualitative data analysis. Um, if you do have any um, queries or questions from watching these sessions, um, then please um, feel free to contact me, like drop me an email um, on my email address, which is just above there, so g.wallet at tease.ac.uk. Thank you.